Good day, students. Welcome to MathGoodServe.com. In this installment, we're going to be going over problem 76 through 80 of the ELM EPT release questions for algebra and uh, geometry. Don't forget to visit our website at MathGoodServe.com for a collection of a wide variety of tutorials ranging from algebra to calculus. All right, let's take a look at question number 76. It says if 3x plus 5y equals 4, and x equals 3 minus 2y, then y equals. Um, this is a system of equations problem. Okay, we have two um, equations. So we have a system of two equations in two variables, namely x and y. So let's set up our system. We have 3x plus 5y equals 4. And then this other equation we have um, x equals 3 minus 2y. So what method can we use to solve this? There are various methods you can use to solve a system of equations. You can use elimination, substitution, you can use graphing. You can even use matrices to solve a system of equations. But whenever you have a variable isolated, as in this case, x is isolated in the second equation, it's um, advisable to make use of substitution method. All right. So let's call this first equation 1, and then let's call this second equation 2. What we're going to do is as follows. We're going to substitute substitute um, 3 minus 2y for x in the first equation, equation 1. All right? Let's go ahead and make a substitution. We're going to have 3 instead of x is going to be replaced with the value of x in equation 2, which is 3 minus 2y. Close that bracket plus 5y equals 4. So what we did in essence is we took the value of x and we plugged it into x right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve this resulting equation for y. First thing we're going to do is resolve the parentheses by distribution. Okay. Distribute 3 to 3 and negative 2y. And then we have 9 minus 6y plus 5y equals 4. Let's go ahead and combine these two terms. Negative 6y plus 5y, since the signs are different, we'll subtract and keep the sign of the bigger one. So we have 9 minus y equals 4. And then we can simply subtract 9 from both sides. Let's divvy up our workspace so we can um, not, so we don't get confused here. So if we do that, we'll have the 9s will add up to 0. We have negative 1 change the color there. Negative y is equal to 4 minus 9 is negative 5. All right, so to address this negativity here, we'll simply divide both sides by negative 1. And then our final answer is y equals minus of a minus is plus y equals 5. Okay, so correct answer is option letter E. Okay, let's move on to problem um, 77. It's, it says uh, if 4x minus 3y equals 17 and 2x plus 5y equals negative 11, then y is what? This is another system of equations problem. So let's go ahead and write down our system of two equations and two variables, 4x minus 3y equals 17 and 2x plus 5y equals negative 11. Now it's a sort for y. Since both of them are in standard form, it's beneficial to use the elimination method to eliminate the variable you're not looking for. So since we're looking for y, we want to eliminate x. All right. So how do we eliminate x? If you look at these two coefficients, you want to find the LCD and then convert one to the um, one should be the LCD and the other should be the opposite of the LCD, okay? So if you look at 4 and 2, the LCD of 4 and 2 is 4. So since this is already 4, I need to make this negative 4. Let's go ahead and do that to make that negative 4, which is the opposite of positive 4. I'll multiply the entire equation by negative 2. Okay, so let's see what that yields. We have the first equation stays the same, 4x minus 3y equals 17. And then the second equation, we have negative 4x minus 10y 
equals minus times minus is positive 22. All right, so we we'll add this equation downwards. When we add it downwards, we're going to have um, negative 13y equals positive 39. To finish this equation up, we'll just simply divide both sides by negative 13. Negative 13, negative 13. And then your answer is going to be y equals negative 3. Y equals negative 3 is our result, and um, option letter A is the solution. All right, now we are shifting gears. We're going into geometry. Let's take a look at problem 78. It says in parallelogram ABCD above, AM is equal to MB, BC is equal to root 2, and DC is equal to 2. What is the area of, para of um, ABCD? All right. So um, area of a parallelogram is the same thing as the area of, of a rectangle. Okay, so area of a parallelogram is basically um, the base times the perpendicular height. Okay, so I'm going to call it base times height. So this entire length right here is the base, and then this perpendicular height here is a height h. So all I just need to do is find the value of D and H, and I'm good to go. We're told that DC is 2, so this is 2. What do we know about parallelograms? For every parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So this side is 2, so this entire side is 2 also. But we are also notified that AM is equal to MB. So AM and MB are congruent. But since they both add up to 2 and they're both congruent, then AM and MB must be 1 and 1, okay? So you just basically take 2 and split it evenly since these two um, segments are congruent. So you bisect 2, you get 1 and 1, okay? So we know what B is. B is equal to 2 units long. The entire base, AB, is congruent to DC. So our base is 2. Now, next thing we want to do is we want to find the height, h. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this triangle right here so we don't get confused. Well, let me extract that right triangle. So we have that right triangle extracted. AM is one unit long. This is one. That's AM. And I need to find h. This is point D. Now, what is AD? We're told that DC is 2, BC is root 2, right? So this side right, right here is BC is root 2. If BC is root 2, what do we know about opposite sides of a parallelogram? Opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel and congruent. So this side is parallel to that side. And guess what? It is also congruent to that side also. So DA is going to be root 2 units long, square root of 2. So look at this 90 degree triangle. Do you notice what this third side is? This is a special right triangle, okay? If you have, a, there are two special cases of a right triangle. The first one is 1, 1, root 2. And then the second um, special triangle has a following ratio. It's 1, root 3, and 2. So if you see any of these patterns showing up on a right triangle, with this being the hypotenuse and these two being the legs, um, you can automatically figure out what the third side is. So if this is a 1, 1, root 2 triangle, because um, this is 1 over 2, following the pattern, you can clearly see that this side is going to be 1. Okay? Now let's assume that you didn't re recognize this pattern, and you just want to figure out what this side is. Well, it's also, it's possible to do that using other methods. You can make use of the Pythagorean theorem, all right? Pythagorean theorem tells us that um, the sum of the square of the legs, a squared plus b squared equals the square of the hypotenuse. So h, let's call that a, am, let's call that b, and then let's call c the hypotenuse, da. What are we looking for? We're looking for h or a, okay? So a squared is going to become h squared plus b squared 
is the other leg, one square equals c squared, which is root two to the hypotenuse, okay? Remember in the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse is always c. All right, let's work this out. We have h squared plus one equals, now when you square the square root of two, since they're opposites, they cancel out, and you're left with two, okay? Subtract one from both sides. You have h squared equals one, and then when you take the square root of both sides, you have h equals one. All right, so you see our observation earlier was in fact accurate. The height of this right triangle is one unit long. This is a 45-45 right triangle, okay? So one, 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 one root two. Now we know that our height is one. So what is our area? The area is simply based on its perpendicular height. So area is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2. So our answer is option letter A. All right, let's take a look at um, question number 79. It says, what is the area of a circle whose circumference is 10 pi? So if you go um, to your reference sheet, which you'd be permitted to use on the exam, there, the, you have the um, formula for the circumference and area of a circle. Circumference um, is what we're provided with. We're told that the circumference C is equal to 10 pi. And we're supposed to find um, the area. So now what is the formula for the circumference of um, a circle? Let's list our formulas down. So if you look at your reference sheet or you already have it memorized, you know that the circumference of a circle is given by the formula 2 pi r. And the area is given by the formula pi r squared. So in order to find the area of a triangle, I mean of a circle, all you need is a radius, okay? So this gives us, helps us to find the radius. So let's go ahead and find the radius using the circumference formula. And then we'll plug our answer into the area formula. Okay, so we have c is 10 pi. We also know that since c is 2 pi r, we know that 2 pi r is equal to 10 pi. What are we looking for? We want to find um, r. So to do that, we divide both sides by 2 pi to isolate r by itself. So we have the 2 pi's cancel out. We'll have r equals 10 over 2 is 5. Pi over pi is 1. So the radius is 5 units long. Okay, now let's go ahead and find the area. So the area is given by the formula pi r squared as indicated earlier. Now we plug in the value of r into a formula. We have pi times pi squared, which is 25 pi. So we can clearly see that our answer is option letter B. All right, let's take a look at um, problem 80. It says the base of a rectangular solid is a square with sides length 3 feet. If the height of the rectangular solid is 5 feet, what is the volume of the solid in cubic feet? So if you consult your uh, reference sheet, you're going to see the formula for volume of a, um, let's see, what, how was it expressed? It was, yeah, it was the volume of a rectangular solid. So the volume is basically length times width times height, length times width times height. But um, the base is a square, so the length and the width are going to be the same. So that's going to um, alter our formula a little bit. So I'm not going to touch this formula. I don't want anyone getting confused. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a sketch of the situation, and then we're going to use that to populate our variables here. So let's go ahead and draw it. We know that the base, the base is a square, so let's go ahead and draw that. So that's our square base. Draw it to the best of your ability. So if it's a square base and it's three feet, what does that mean? It means that this side is three, three, all sides are three, three. All right? But this is a solid that's five feet high. So you just basically make it five feet high, just making a random sketch here. So we know what our base is. So next thing we want to find now is um, the height. Okay, part of my horrible drawing. Um, so we have the base 
and now the height, this side is 5 feet. So what is length? What is our width? And what is our height? The length and the width are applicable to the base, okay? They help you find the base area. Since the base is a square, the length and the width are equal, so they're both 3. 3 feet, okay? The height is 5 feet, so there you have it. So your volume, making use of these values in our formula, is going to be 3 times 3. That is the area of the base times the height times the height, which is 5 units long. So 3 times 3 is 9 times 5, 45 uh, cubic feet. All right, so our answer is option letter C. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Do feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review series and other great review tutorials. And do post a comment to let us know what you think about this clip. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it or appreciate it. More clips can be found on mathgotserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.